Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me. We are finalizing our Art Passports journey through Japan and I felt we really needed to do a lino cut or woodblock print. Um, when you think of Japanese art, these are so iconic in the culture. So if you um, go to our Pinterest board, you're gonna see a lot of samples that are these gorgeous, gorgeous, detailed woodblock prints um, in multiple colors um, that are absolutely gorgeous. And the, and the technique used in Japan is unique to its own country. Um, we are not gonna do the same process as they are. I um, as, am not as detail-oriented as an artist. I'm much more of a free artist, so I do struggle with leno cut, but I do, I, I love the results of them. Um, when we returned from Japan, I had hoped I had brought home more artwork from Japan, but it's always hard to carry while you're traveling. So when I returned, I found this artist on Etsy. Her name is Margaret Rankin, and she had these gorgeous woodblock prints that are inspired by Japan. Um, and I just want to show you guys these one because just the detailing and the way she carved it and the different lines she used in the different direction just to add a lot of interest. Um, this one here is a Japanese pine. Um, I mean, just the amount of detail is just gorgeous. And these hang in our house all the time. I just love the black and white look. Um, so today we're just gonna work on um, one ink. Um, if you get better and better at these, you can certainly add more colors. Personally, I, I've only really done the black ink, just a one color ink um, for myself. But um, really gorgeous pieces. This is something I did really quick. Um, you know, I don't, I don't particularly love it. I could have thought it out more through, but I ended up drawing this on the block with a Sharpie and then just carving it out quickly just to experiment and work on technique. Um, and you can see there that's on the newsprint and then this is what it would look like on craft print. So it's going to give you different styles, but you can use these in your art journals. You can cut them out, use them in a mixed media piece. Um, they certainly serve as multiple purposes, or you could just print them on white paper and then keep printing them and reusing them. Um, we're gonna go through a little bit of what tools you need. So I think on uh, Dick Blick, you can buy a starter kit, which would include your um, speed speedball has a whole starter kit, which has your carving blocks. And these guys, these are amazing. When I did lino cut when I was in junior high, it was, a wood block really hard and I have a scar from it because I had cut myself, it had slipped and I had cut my finger, I had to get stitches. So, but this material is so soft, so easy to work on, um, great for artists. If you're working with an older kid, they can also work on this. So I highly re recommend um, these pink blocks by Speedball. Also, you can see where you carved away much easier and it's it's just much easier to work with. Um, but that kit does come with a brayer. This is where you're gonna put your ink and you're gonna roll it on when we're done carving. And I believe it comes with a block printing ink as well that's water soluble ink. And your blade, which in the inside, when you open it up, there's different size blades. This one right here is kind of more of a V shape. So you're gonna get different techniques, different cuts, depending on what you're using and the size you're using. Um, you have a round one. That's when you're really gonna to have to cut away. Like if you needed to cut around your tree to get the whole background, you could really cut away with something like this. So um, in order to put it in, I'm gonna see if I can get this one here. Um, we're gonna put our blades back screw this on and there is a round side that doesn't have a blade and that just fits right in let's see into the ball area right there and then you twist it make sure it's nice and secure so that it doesn't slip around and you can change out your blades depending on again what technique you want 
So I had already started, there's, there's a few different ways to put a photo onto your blog. So if you work in Illustrator um, or on the computer, you can easily do that. Um, take your Illustrator drawing or illustration and print it out on a piece of paper. You could work from a photograph, that's what I had here, or you could directly draw onto these blocks with a Sharpie. So one thing to remember is whatever is black, you are not cutting. So it's you have to think in the opposite. So um, anything here that's white has been carved away. So then the relief is left and you're gonna roll the ink over whatever is remaining. So you just have to think a little bit opposite. So if your drawing is, you're drawing the trees, you're gonna wanna cut what isn't black, I guess, is what's not in the Sharpie. You're gonna wanna cut around the black, essentially. So for this one, I'm actually gonna do the opposite. So I have, we talked about Wabi Sabi, which is um, embracing the imperfections in life. And I love this vase photo. Um, I also did a painting of it, because um, it is just, it embraces that very that simple, and there's a crack into the vase, and then these branches just spurting out. I just think it has so much life. So instead of making the branches black like they are in the photo, I am actually gonna make them white and leave the background black. So the vase and the branches are gonna be white and we're gonna have a black background. So I'm gonna go ahead and start carving away. Um, Make sure, first of all, safety, uh, carve away from yourself. You can have a wood block or work kind of against a wall so that it's secure, so that you're pressing away from it and it's not moving around. And do not ever put your hand in front. Do not be like me in junior high and cut your hand because it hurts. Um, and just kind of slowly, you can see I have a little paper residue, so it's a little hard to get through at first, but I am gonna just slowly cut through these lines. Um, and you're gonna have a giant mess, you guys. There's gonna be little pink pieces all over, so put a board down, um, you know, or some newspaper and work over it. But I'm also trying to, um, I'm kind of new to this as well, so I just want to, experiment with my own carvings, you know? So instead of having it completely black around, I wanna have a little texture come through. You can see in this print in particular that she did, there's a little texture. So she left just a teeny bit around that is exposed to the ink just for a little bit more texture. So I would, I would go on Pinterest, research some lino cuts, just to give you an idea of different ways to carve and different techniques. Um, Again, sometimes they turn out great and sometimes they don't. Um, but less is more here. So you always, you, you can't get it back, right? So um, cut the least amount as possible to start and then you can ink it, see how it turns out and then see if you need to cut more. But once you cut it, it's gone. So um, definitely start with less is more and you'll get a pretty good feel of what um, marks you like, kind of like just anything, like a journal when you're doing your own mark making. It's kind of the same with this where you have to experiment, do little short little things um, or long, maybe you like them, you know, nice long carving out. Um, so just experiment, but you will see, again, this giant mess all around. So make sure uh, you put something down. But I'm gonna speed this up and then once we get to the inking part, um, we can slow it down again.
everyone, welcome back to my very messy space. You can see all these little carvings are everywhere, but I wanted to bring this up close so you guys can kind of see. So I used this photograph basically just as a basis. So I wanted to make sure I knew kind of where some of the major branches went, but then I kind of took it my own way. So I didn't carve out the entire vase. I want to see what it looks like when I ink it if just a little bit is removed. Um, and I left a little bit of texture. So, I mean, I would love if a little bit of line comes through here. Um, and instead of being completely black, I put some marks around the edges and I might add some more depending on how it comes out after I ink it. And then you can see here the little branches. I went further out. I just kind of did a little carving um, away of those. So um, this is certainly, I, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but it is certainly something that older kids can work on. This is such a good surface, you guys, that you can do curves and you can cut away without really having a hard time cutting through. So a lot of the older kids can work on this. For younger kids, I wish I had it in front of me, but when you get a piece of meat at the grocery store or portobello mushrooms or some vegetables, it is um, there's a styrofoam plate at the bottom. So that um, you can ask your deli market or your grocery store for clean ones, and you can have your young kids um, use a pencil or a like a um, skewer, like a wood skewer to carve in their own drawings into that. And they can do the exact same process without using a blade. And it's amazing what they come up with, you guys. If you give them a little bit of inspiration and then let them run with it, it's, it's just so neat what they can come up with. And I will post our personal projects of my um, daughters in first grade of what she comes up with, what she had come up with as well. So um, just to give you an idea, so here is our block printing ink. So we're gonna put a little bit of that on a piece of paper and roll it out. Um, the best, actually the best way to do it is if you have a plexiglass or a piece of glass to roll, um, to roll the ink onto. So I have, I have a piece of glass that I'm going to use. I'm going to put a little bit on there. If you don't have it, a piece of paper is fine. It will pick up some of the fibers, so it can change it a little bit. And you're going to go with your brayer, and you're just going to roll out. Um, you want you don't want to get too much ink on there, you guys. So just a little bit. So as you see right here that it started making kind of like a texture pattern. That means there's too much ink on there, but you want to get it all the way across the brayer um, and make sure it's just kind of a thin layer. You can always add more. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over this. You can start seeing here where I carved away. And sometimes it's hard even as you're carving to know what you've carved away until you get the black ink on there. So I am already noticing some details I really like and some that might need a little bit of touching up. Um, I'm adding a little bit more ink. You can see there's a lot of pink showing through. So it's fine to have a little bit of more ink. And it's just kind of a process. Um, you know, sometimes I'll roll it and there's way too much ink and sometimes there's not enough. And it also depends on the texture of your paper. If you're working on paper that has a lot of texture, it's going to look a lot different than on a piece of paper that's nice and smooth. Um, I have some rice paper that is from Japan, but it has a lot of texture. So I'm not sure how it's going to print on that. And then I also have just a plain old newsprint. And so we'll practice on that to see, see how it turns out. So I'm not going to get perfect with it right now. I'm going to just see how our first one is going to turn out. If I need to do some carving or add more ink. Um, again, just your basic newsprint here. So instead of flipping it over and putting it on, which causes risk of it moving, I like to put it on top. So if you want it centered, you know, spend the time to do that. But right now I'm just trying to figure out what my print actually looks like. So lay it flat, try not to let the paper move, and then you go over it 
smooth it out all around so it makes sure you get every single corner. And then we're gonna slowly peel off the paper and see what we get. I mean, it is fun. There's a, it's always a surprise factor, at least to me, maybe because I'm inexperienced with widow cut, but um, there is always a surprise factor on how it turns out. So already I can see there's not enough ink in spots and there's too much in others, but I am kind of liking the direction it's going, you guys. So I like that it was the opposite, that it's the white branches, but if I get a really good, um, good black on there, I think it's gonna turn out really nice. Um, something like this, you, instead of just tossing it, you can cut it out and use it in your journal. You could use, um, you know, clear gesso, put it down or PVA glue and glue it into your journal and then paint over it. You could use it in a mixed media piece. Um, maybe you want some of those branches and those lines. Um, that would be a really good way to use the ones that don't turn out well. Um, but let's see if we can get one that's much darker. We're gonna add a lot more ink. See how it turns out here. And, you know, I know some people, it's, they, they want it really perfect and specifically in Japan, the technique is just so precise. Um, my, my way of window cutting is uh, much more free. I, uh, I'm not looking for complete perfection. The other way you can use these, you guys, is for cards. I made a series of cards during the holidays and I would just, I would already have my print and I could make as many as I wanted and just give them as cards to people. So you could make one for the season or make a birthday card that you use every time there's a birthday. Um, I mean, they, they're reusable. So you can print as many of these as you want once it's carved. So that's the beauty of this is if it is a print that's popular or selling well for you, um, or you, maybe you're not selling them. Maybe you're just giving them away to your friends. And But you can just keep reusing the design, which is really great. Let's see. Always takes me a little bit to figure out the exact amount, but we'll try this. And again, I'm just going to use a Strathmore newsprint. So nothing too fancy there. I just want to practice an experiment and be careful you do get ink I don't mind right now but you can get ink on your fingers and then it can go on the back of the paper um, be mindful of that just wash your hands if, if you really don't want any ink of course on the back of the paper if you are making professional prints that you're gonna sell um, and then you can always make a limited edition and sign them and put put the number of print it is on there and you can also work on a nice watercolor with, you know, a torn edge. It um, can be beautiful once you know you like your design and you know you have the right amount of ink. So let's try again. Pull away slowly. Okay. I think that turned out much better. So here you can see there's a little dot. I think that's a remains of the paper um, from when I did my peeling. So I'll go through, I'm gonna wash this off and I'm gonna clean it up a little bit more with the paper, rub the paper off. But I am liking this. I love, I personally like having a lot of the texture in. I don't like it perfectly black. I love that it kind of has that really textured finish. So um, it's not perfect, but I'll keep experimenting and I, I encourage you to do the same and just practice. And, you know, I might go away around and carve a little bit more here or some more of those details in the background. But I hope you enjoy and I hope you get your kids or your grandkids involved in this process. Thank you.